Well, good morning and welcome to my series of macroeconomic essay plans for Edexcel Paper 2. Fascinating question for you today, focusing on inequality. Other links that I'm going to make in this essay, immediately thinking I might consider the impact of government policy. Especially things like taxation. I'm also going to try and make some links here because I know there can be winners and losers from trade. So I'm also going to make reference to globalization. As soon as I look at the question, I'm looking for key terms. So I'm looking here at income inequality. Income is a flow concept. So I'm going to be thinking about an inequality in the distribution of, for example, wages from employment. I'm also going to need to think about wealth. It's a stock of assets that people own. And I'm going to think about inequality in the distribution of those assets. For example, the housing stock. Last thing I need to make sure of is that I'm putting in plenty of references to a country of my choice. Now, in this case, I am not going to go anywhere away from the UK because without any doubt, that's the country that I know the most about. Might be different for you, but I think the UK is the most obvious choice here. So, with those ideas in place, if you haven't done so already, I recommend you pause the video now and attempt to write a plan of this essay before you listen to the rest of the video. Okay, so point one, I'm gonna start my essay by thinking about skills and differences in skills. This is gonna have a really important impact on income inequality. And it's quite straightforward to explain why. There are differences in skills between individuals, and these arise partly because of differences in educational opportunity, uh, differences in ability, we can say that people who have high skills will attract high demand for their labour. And I can show impact quite easily. So if you've got high skills, get this high demand for labour, you get a clear wage differential. So these differences in education opportunity lead to differences in skills and that creates income inequality. Now, you could develop that in context by talking about different schools, private schools or state schools, and of course you could make um, reference to different jobs as well. But I think that's a sensible point to make, and it's easy one to explain theoretically as well. Can evaluate that point straight away the differences in skills that we're going to see across a population are going to depend a little bit on government policy so i've talked here about educational opportunity differences in that will depend on the size of investment made into UK 
state schools. At the moment, if you watch the news, we hear there's a, a crisis in funding in state education in the UK. That would be something that I could bring in to reach level three so that I've got some contextualised analysis in place. That's my first point. Moving on to fiscal policy. Now, here I'm able to tackle income and wealth inequality. I'll start with income inequality again. The government's policy with regards to things like taxation is going to have a big impact on the distribution of income in the UK. And if there's one opportunity for contextualised analysis in this essay, it's probably at this point right here. So in the UK, we know that there have been changes to the tax system over the last 20, 30 years. One of the, the policies that was changed was the introduction of the 50% the tax rate in the UK. We've seen a reduction in the top rate. to 45p in the pound for those earning £150,000 plus. So what this policy is doing is it's allowing the richest to keep more of their income and that's promoting income inequality. It's absolutely key somewhere in this essay I'm going to talk about wealth inequality. One of the policies that the government has been very keen to change is, because it's politically popular, is to reduce the threshold at which people pay inheritance tax. Now, I haven't got any figures on that off the top of my head, but you can do a quick Google search if you want to find something to put in your essay. There have been downward reductions to the inheritance tax threshold which allows wealthy people to pass assets on to their children and that leads to a concentration of assets within certain people and certain families and that promotes wealth inequality. both cases here we're going to see the Gini coefficient which is a good measure of inequality move towards one so these are both likely to change the respective Gini coefficients you can get a Gini coefficient for wealth or income that's going to move towards one there's going to be more inequality now again Evaluating this one, you're just looking for an example of a policy that works on the other side. So these policies probably promote inequality. There have been some policies which have reduced it. And the obvious one here, again, coming back to income, there's been an increase in the personal allowance in the UK to, I think, £11,000 recently. So that's taken a lot of people out of tax. So that's increased disposable income for the lowest earners. And that would probably be my evaluation there. Um, in this point, you could easily talk about changes to the benefit system, if that's what you know about. But government policy... Tax spending, absolutely crucial with regards to inequality. So there are a number of points that I could have raised here at the end of this essay, but one that I'm confident talking about is globalisation. So the UK is at the moment quite a globalised economy. We're a member of the EU single market. And it is possible to make the case that that has had a negative impact on inequality, particularly income inequality in the UK. So being in that single market, what does it mean? We have free trade with member states. It's 
well as the free movement of people. That's led to some offshoring of production. As firms look to cut costs. If you want an example of that, you can go online and look recently at Nestle, which has moved some jobs to Poland. That's likely to have an impact on inequality because it's going to take people who earn a decent wage in manufacturing and it's going to make them structurally unemployed. For people losing an income, that's going to put them right down at the bottom of the in income distribution. It's going to separate them from other members of society. It's going to create inequality. Uh, a better point here, if you want to really develop this, um, it's certain types of jobs near the bottom of the income distribution which are disappearing over, overseas, low-skilled jobs. Mm -hmm. So there's a big differential opening up between those people with skills and those people without. So it's coming back to point one, if you have skills in the labour market, you're winning. If you don't, you're now not even going to be able to earn a living um, doing some manufacturing. You're probably just going to, to lose your job. It's going to be offshored uh, for foreign competition and cost cutting. So um, that's likely to lead to a widening of the income distribution. Now, if I'm going to evaluate this point, again, just going to look at the, from a different perspective, as well as jobs being offshored out of the UK, we also get jobs offshored into the UK. The UK attracts from being a member of the single market foreign direct investment, which actually creates jobs. And I can provide some contextualised analysis there by referring again to someone like Nissan. There are loads of other car companies that have created jobs in the UK. That's created jobs for people. It's raised them up the income ladder. It's taken them out of unemployment. So in that way, I think you could argue that globalisation has losers, but also it has winners. So I've got a nice two-sided argument there. This essay allows me to make a brief judgment at the end about what the main cause of income and wealth inequality in the UK is. Um, I don't want to repeat myself, but I think that last point on globalisation has really helped me to make the case that skills are absolutely key in the UK um, when it comes to thinking about inequality. So globalisation has made... made skills absolutely key to keeping your job and to earning a high wage. So therefore I can argue that skills is a, an absolutely important factor, but perhaps even more important is globalisation because that's really exemplified the differences and exaggerated the differences between high and low skilled workers. So you could you could develop that really in either way, um, and there's obviously no right answer, but globalisation has made skills absolutely key to earning a high wage, and it means that those without skills are left without an income. So I'm going to conclude my essay by arguing that globalisation is the main cause of income and wealth inequality in the UK. And that would certainly fit in with the Brexit vote that we had on the 23rd of June, seeing people lose patience with globalisation and want to retreat from it. So I'm quite happy with that as a judgment. The next video in this sequence is going to be about the 2009 budget and its tax changes. I'm sure you can't wait. <laughs>